in this episode, I'm going to create a map in Dungeon Draft. It's of a vineyard that a group of players are protecting from a series of night attacks. And this example really highlights the difference between an informational map and a battle map. You know, a battle map is what you use uh, playing D&D in a virtual tabletop like Fantasy Grounds or Roll20. An informational map tends to be of larger scale. It gives players an idea of the distances between, you know, settlements or geographical features. So I use five foot squares to adjudicate combat when I play D&D. And even if you had software that was capable of, let's say, creating a map of London with five foot squares, you know, it would be totally unwieldy to zoom in and out, you know, the computer RAM to hold that map. And it would be pointless because most of the movement that you're doing doesn't need to be tracked in terms of turn by turn. But as always, there are unique situations where a battle map can serve as an informational map as well, where you have multiple potential encounter sites on one map. And my map of Phineas's Vineyard at the edge of the barren hills is one such map. Hello again, gang. K.R. King here, helping one and all homebrew their own D&D campaign. So as I said today, I'm going to create a map of Phineas's Vineyard that will serve as an informational map and a battle map. And if you want to know more about Rodenburg, the city, Phineas's Vineyard, I have a whole series of videos which you can check out. But you don't need to know the story. Just imagine that a group of player characters have come to this remote vineyard in the, uh, the edge of the hills because they've been getting attacked at night by unknown assailants. The players are moving there in secret and then they're going to hide out and they're going to try to stop the attack in progress so they can identify the enemy. So the players are going to need a complete map of Phineas's vineyard to decide where and how to protect it and of course Phineas would have such a map so he'd provide it to them. So in theory you would have one large scale informational map and then you'd have a series of battle maps maybe on the different areas of his vineyard where, you know, as the GM, I'm thinking this might be where there's an encounter. But in this situation, I'm actually going to combine both. Now, the restriction here in terms of software, Dungeon Draft allows you to make a map the largest size, 128 squares by 128 squares, which works out at a 5-foot square to 640 feet by 640 feet which works out to be just under 10 acres. So let's say I go with something around number 120 squares by 120 squares, that works out to be eight acres. You may ask yourself, well, is that realistic for a vineyard? Now we are in a fantasy world, we can sort of do whatever we want, but I, you know, like with most things that I have no idea, I looked it up on the internet. And what I discovered was that vineyards can produce anywhere from two to 10 tons of grapes per acre. Now, there's a couple things. This is a medieval technology, you know, whatnot. And also, Phineas, I had established as this elite winemaker. He only takes the best grapes. So I said, okay, he does two tons per acre, eight acres. You know, that's still a lot of barrels of wine. The other thing about having a map this big is you got to fill it in. I did this on the map of Rodenburg with all sorts of rocks and shrubs. I used the scatter tool. Uh, in Dungeon Draft, I'll do basically the same thing, except that I'm going to be making these uh, grape vines, you know, and they have to be strung out and sort of connected. So there is going to be some time spent on that. You know, fortunately, there is a copy feature where you can, you know, mass copy objects in Dungeon Draft, which I'll show. Now, in real life, wine is often uh, grown on hillsides. You know, they have southern exposure and the soil and climate tends to be in areas where there's hills. So I have the barren hills. So I'm going to create these terraced hills which is going to be kind of a fun feature to do in Dungeon Draft. Again, though, it's going to be a little time consuming. So again, I'll show that. I'll do things in fast motion and whatnot. And then I'll kind of skip ahead to the finished map. And then, of course, what we'll see when the map is done, this large area, you realize that when the players are in the buildings, let's say, you know, far off up in the hills, the vineyard, it's a long ways away. Even if they can hear something going on, it's going to take a while for them to get there. All right, let's dive into Dungeon Draft. All right, so I'm going to bring up a new file and I'm going to go with a customized template. This is 120 by 120. And that's basically an eight acre plot. All right, so here we go. So in terms of my terrain, uh, it always defaults to settlement. Uh, you can go barren here. This top one is the overall terrain. Let's go close up. 
and you can decide, you know, we're in the Barren Hills. Uh, I don't know. Let's see. I think I'll stick with Rocky because I'm going to have a road with sand down here. And so I wanted to, if we look at this, uh, you know, I wanted to show up nicely. Now, the next question is, where do you put the structures? There's going to be three structures in this map. I'm going to have the main house, Phineas's main house. I'm going to have the barn where he stores his animals and carts. And then I'm going to have a barn where he uh, stores his wine barrels, uh, also some winemaking uh, paraphernalia. And then surrounding that will be the vineyards themselves. The question is, do you put it in the center of the map or down at some end? And the house is going to be along a road. And I'm wondering if sometimes you think of farms as being along a road on one side of a road. This also has a practical effect in that if the house is something, the barns and the structures are being protected, but there is activity attacks in other areas of the vineyard, if you are at the front end of the map, those are going to be much farther away for the players to react to. So I think what I will do is I'm going to create a road here. And as we can see, and I'm just going to sort of angle this. Like so, I'm going to put something in there when I make these roads. I'm assuming that they will follow uh, the terrain. So once you finish the road, this is going to be where... Oops, let me make that a little larger here. All right. So now we go to our building tool. I'm going to use stone here because stone... Uh, this is, this, you know, this rocky area. And we'll say for his main dwelling, each hex is 5 feet. So that'd be 10, 30 feet, like so. And then maybe another little building, a little structure like that. Okay. So we got our stone walls. And I'll put a wall in there. Uh, wood wall here, separating these. All right, and then I'm going to make a barn. So we will say that's going to be quite a bit bigger, I think. Okay, like so. And then I'm going to have the structure to store the various vineyard materials. So I'm just going to put that over here. All right, so I've got my three structures. Uh, then I'm going to take my, again, my terrain brush tool, my sand, and we're just going to fill, this is, you know, obviously there's traffic in here, so this is going to create a natural path, like so. So now i got these three structures. i got my road going out of town, and I'm going to make that a little bit wider at certain spots, however you want to do that. Now I'm, I'm going to make my vineyards. But see, what I'm going to do is, I'm, I'm in the hills, I'm up in this high area. So I'm going to make cliffs. I'm going to go, let's start at 2 and see how that looks. Or 2 point whatever. So I'm going to take this path tool and I am going to follow this road contour with this cliff. And I'm just going to say the reason they went around this was because of right this hill. I want to make this higher. So this is, this is the reason the road was, went, turned in that direction was this cliff. So now I want to start creating these terraces that are going to form the vineyards because they're built along hillsides. So how do I want to do this? Um, and each level of this terrace is going to be you know, whatever you're going to designate, 10 feet, you know, 15, whatever, the natural hillside that's then flattened out. And then I'll build another one. And another one. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make vines along here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create this with my uh, object tool. And I'm going to go down here. I got this additional package from this two minute thing. And I kind of like, right, these are, uh, so if I take this and I plop it in there. And then I pick it, I can make it quite a bit bigger right? So what I can do is I can create a vine. Now let's look at that vine in terms of its size. You know, you're looking at 10 feet. That's pretty wide, right, for a vine. So maybe I'll make that a little narrower, like so. 
And then I can, of course, copy that and make another one. And then I can, uh, oops, rotate that, sort of make it follow, you know, the contour here. Here's another one. And I can make uh, two paths here, so you'll have a, a you know space in between these, right? Like if the walking in, and this is going to be you know uh, obscure terrain. It's going to be you know tall. You can't get, just climb through there. This is all on sticks and whatever. This is like fencing. Okay. Oops. Well, let's let's make a few more of these. So, like so. Now, obviously, this is going to take some time to do. Now, you can also take a bunch of these and go like so. All right, so I'm going to just, in fast motion here, I'm going to draw in. Uh, these other uh, mount, you know, terraces that I'm creating. And again, I'm just trying to create kind of some unusual shapes and whatnot. Then I'm going to make this one thicker because I'm going to put the, some water source, a river in there. So this is going to end up being kind of a gorge. So now I'm going to put in my water source here. I'm just going to trace this out going around the structures and then across the road. Put a little bridge in there on the road. There we go. Okay, and just kind of expand, just kind of give it a feel of a river, you know, going around rocks. I'm gonna later put in some rocks and stuff in here and gravel and whatnot. And I'm gonna have that go right up to the edge there. Alrighty. Make that a little higher and then you can just adjust that. So now I got kind of canyon walls there. Maybe one more down here, yeah, and around. And then if you end it, you can do edit points and kind of extend it. All right, so I'm just going to go to the finished map. I thought about recording this and showing, you know, in fast motion every little aspect. The thing is, I, I, you know, a lot of times I'll try something, I didn't like that, I'll go back, forth. I found it even fast motion, it's not that interesting. All right, so here we have the map, the final map here. And looking at different areas here, I've got this road that runs along like this and then comes into this area. I've cleared the sand area. This is our storage barn over here uh, for barrels of wine. Uh, these two are these large barrels where they <clears throat> um, stomp on the grapes. Those would be raised up off the ground. You could actually hide in those or something if you wanted to, uh, but they squash the grapes when they harvest. Uh, again, I did just kind of a general first floor of uh, Phineas's house uh, we have here the barn, you know, animals. And again, depending on how much time you want to spend on this stuff, I, I enjoy making maps, but for this example, I wanted to sort of get this done and, and get it out here. Uh, again, this road, what I did was, you know, I put some plants, I scattered some plants and some rocks in here. Dungeon Draft does that pretty well. Again, if you have some confrontation, when you bring this into your a fantasy grounds, for example, you've got to put your line of sight restrictions on here if you want. Uh, we go up to the to the notice now. I've got these vines all drawn in here. I also made these stone steps that they created to go from level to level. Uh, if you don't use those, and if you're just trying to climb the players, it's much more difficult to do in terms of movement and whatnot, uh, making you know checks and things, skill checks. So that that's where the movement can occur. When I bring these vines in. Uh, these are going to restrict line of sight and movement. Those are all, you know, strung together very tightly. I'm going to probably make some little doorways, some little sections, or if you break through, you can certainly break it down. But again, if you have a con battle up in here in these things, and again, you have, uh, you know, line of sight restrictions and movement. Notice up here, I've got this. These, this is where Kurok's men, in an earlier incident, poison the vines, right? These are dead vines. And so, you know, the players may go explore this or whatever if they want to see if there's any clues here or whatever. Uh, and I have, again, this river that comes down here, the water source uh, flows through. You've got, this is where they, uh, the, the main, you know, agricultural workers moving through here over this little bridge. Again, here are some steps. Um, 
The other thing that I've got in addition to these vines, I've got this little caretaker hut. So I'm going to have a guy up here who lives up here and he has a view, you know, during the daytime or whatever. He can see, you know, Phineas's property. That's a good, uh, so you could, the players could decide to go there. Uh, they could decide thinking that the attack is going to be here at the, you know, where the wine is or something. Uh, but again, you can see now the distances that it's going to take. If there's some activity up here or up in here, uh, it, and the players are all here, then it's going to take time. So they have to decide what they're going to do. So there you have it, a battle map. That's also an informational map using, you know, Dungeon Draft to the extreme end. If you like what you've seen, please subscribe to my channel. I'm always looking for more. Please leave me some comments. I always answer them. But most importantly, my friends, keep playing D&D &D and tell somebody else about it.